Good week, everybody. Good week. Welcome to episode number 207 of the Nick and Co. Show. I am obviously Nick. This is Brooklyn. Hey, everyone. Brooklyn wants to tell everyone where they can find us first. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Nick and Co. Show. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Begath13. And you can find Nick on Twitter at the Nicker jo- at Nicker Jones. Sorry. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Not this again. Yeah, <laughs> Every <home>. week. <laughs> Damn it. And Instagram at the Nicker Jones. I'm, I'm going to hack them eventually. Eventually <laughs> I'm going to get them. I've got a lot of things on my plate right now, but soon. If you know somebody who knows somebody who knows the Nicker Jones. <laughs> yeah, well, I am the Nicker Jones, but I'm also Nicker Jones and I just want my name back. But anyway, lots of t- lots of topics uh, today, lots of things happening in sports. We had that uh, stadium series in Colorado, some bullshit surrounding mm-hmm. that we'll talk about. Uh, we can talk about some officiating uh, issues. Um, we had a post in the Beer League Players Association group that I just want to touch on. I had an official reach out to me, and then we had some some pro-level officiating mm-hmm. bullshit. Um, you know, so we got, we got some things to cover, but first, how can you support Nick and Co. Show? The Beer League Players Association, Beer League Inc., all that stuff. How? Tell me. We can come to our events for one. Okay, I like it. You can go on our website, mm-hmm. click all the ads on the blogs. <laughs> I like it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, what else can you do? You can send me nice messages or Brooklyn, whatever. Nice. Let some us mouth know. hugs. You could send us some mouth hugs. That'd be <laughs> that'd be great. Um, or you can do what uh, a bunch of lovely people are doing and helping make our show and our content better by supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Beer League Inc. I-N-C. Um, doesn't take a lot. $2, mm-hmm. oh. $5, $10, whatever. Different levels. You don't have to be the highest level, but there are a couple people in the highest level. And now mm-hmm. we will take our time, we will bow our heads, and we will pray to these gods of Beer League. Everyone bow your head. Today... We are gathered here around these microphones to honor individuals that are the deities of Beer League. May the Beer League gods bless your sticks, bless your pucks, bless your goalie gloves, your bats, your bowling balls, your pins, your darts. I don't know any. I'm, I'm running out of beer league sports. Your basketballs. Your volleys. Your volleys. May they really help you rape the net and make those digs, score those goals, dunk those basketballs, and hit the pocket. Amen. Amen. But really, thank you to everyone that supports the show, the Beer League Players Association, the content. Ton of it coming. Hopefully, we'll see you at some events in 2020. You guys are rad, and especially you guys, the Beer League gods, you guys are the raddest. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Let's talk about things that are going on in the BLPA. We've got a bunch of events coming up. We have Omaha coming up in a, less than a month Woo! from now. That's the draft experience. But before that, here in two weeks, uh, Beer League Players Association is going to make its team tournament debut at a premier hockey tournament in Philadelphia. Nice. And we're looking for skaters. All right. You're going to make history if you skate with us. Ooh. You'll be the first, first BLPA team ever. You'll be the first crew to ever wear the BLPA jerseys. So if you are in and around Philadelphia, March 6th to 8th, we've got, it's a three-game tournament. It's 130 bucks a player. We'll provide the jerseys. You don't get to keep them. You got to give them back. But we'll have a blast. We'll drink a lot of beer and we'll have a lot of fun. That's in two weeks. And then we got Omaha. And then two weeks after Omaha, we got Colorado Springs. And then two weeks after that, we're in my hometown of Oklahoma City. Really getting ready to kind of flip the switch on the the hockey events. Um, We're trying to decide right now in Colorado, are we going six teams? Are we going four teams? So if you're interested, we need you to register. That's basically it. We need to know if we need to, because we got to order. It takes a month to get the jerseys. Okay. Jerseys are rad. The theme is going to be, it hadn't even been released. Oh. It's going to be released. For, I'm not going to release the exact theme until we get the jerseys. It's going to be cool, but there's a really rad brewery in and around the area. It, the brewery is oh, okay. actually in Fort Collins, if that gives away any type of hint. 
but we're going to use uh, a few of their beer logos, which are really rad, hockey-centric, really cool jerseys. Um, so sign up, play, puck, drink, and do other things. That's nice. our logo. Yeah, I like it. Sign up, pay, and do things. That's our logo. That's our that's our motto. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. So uh, anyway, yeah, a lot of things going on. Uh, first, Brooklyn, what what did you get into this uh, last week? Um. Well, I went on a date. Ooh. I know. I and know. you didn't uh, even let me know so I could come and, like we talked about this with Gabby a few weeks ago, and I we know. said- when you go on a date, we want to be there and we want to be able to feed you lines. And you didn't even let me know. What is this? Well, I went to a really classy establishment, so I just oh, would they the wouldn't vibe. What? Where'd you go? Well, my date had never been to Olive Garden, <laughs> <laughs> so really that's, that should have been a red that's flag. The there. classy <laughs> establishment. They'd let me in there for sure. I thought you were banned from there. Have you not seen my red jacket that I wear around now? I was wearing it tonight. Oh. Did not know that was yours. Yeah, I wore Whoa. that on the live video tonight. It's a nice little smoking jacket. Basically, Ooh. I learned if you wear a jacket like that, you can do and say whatever the fuck you want. Well, I'm sorry for not inviting you. If I would have known you had the coat, okay, would invite so you. So you're wait, hold on. <laughs> a guy you're dating has never been to the Olive Garden. Yeah, I know. How old is he? Old enough that he probably should have been to an Olive Garden. Uh, to be fair, yeah, in Canada they're not as That's numerous. True. There's one, yeah, one in Calgary, but still, but still, it's it's the Olive Garden. Did you eat breadsticks? Yes, oh, of course. They just came out of the oven. Those are my favorite words. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to Olive Garden <laughs> and the lady says, "Oh, I brought these breadsticks," breadsticks, they just came out of the oven. Yeah. Game you know over. it's going to be a good night. Game over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lucky you. Lucky yeah. him. Yeah. No kidding. Lucky him. So how did the date go? Yeah. You know, it was can't go wrong. You're at Olive Garden with the breast. <laughs> so Touche. Really. Touche. All you can eat stuffed pasta. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of like a uh, fettuccine Alfredo guy myself. Oh, uh, yeah. But, I mean, I really like Italian food because mm. I really love Rome in general, like, mm -hmm. and so uh, I always, I, I always, now I, since I've been to Rome and I've had authentic Roman Ooh. food, Olive Garden just doesn't cut it for me. That's fair. I, you know, I hear that from some people. It's, you know, some, not some people. <laughs> you mean seen. it's not authentic? I, no, it's not authentic. Uh, and basically, even when I went to Rome, I just had like carbonara. Have I ever told you about the restaurant I went to in Rome? No, you haven't. Okay. Tell me now. So I'm a huge Rome like mm -hmm. ancient Rome history. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a nerd about that kind of stuff. I mean, when I was in, when I was in high school, I took three years of Latin. Oh, um, I was, uh, I was on the board of the junior classical league, the Latin club of Westmore high school. Wow. Um, and so I've always wanted to go to Rome and I had a chance to go straight out of high school. My grandmother was going to pay for everything as my senior trip, but I would, I wanted to rather stay and play ball mm -hmm. for the summer mm -hmm. because it was my senior year. And I want to try to get a scholarship, which I did. So it worked out. Nice. Um, <clears throat> but I missed my Rome trip. And so I didn't get to go until two years ago, 2017, when I was going to play a hockey tournament in Salzburg, Austria. Mm. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go over there anyway. So I'm going to fly into Rome. I got to spend 36 hours there. Nice. Not much, okay. but enough to, enough to wet the old whistle. Yeah. Do right? what the Romans do. Yes. All right. Do what, I did what the Romans did. <laughs> Had governor. <laughs> and so, you know, I did the touristy stuff, mm -hmm. Coliseum. I checked out, you know, the very first sports arena that they have underground there. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of really cool things. But then I was like, I want to have authentic Roman food. So I oh. looked up all this, mm -hmm. this, this stuff. And there was a restaurant called Antica Via Roma. Oh, all right. Has and a nice it, ring to it. Yeah, and it, was, it was outside of town, outside of the, the thing, but it was still on like the Appian Way, which mm -hmm. is obviously the main road that goes out of Rome. And it's still the brick that they used. All the way back in the times of like Marius, Marius's yep. mules, all right. first contracted army in Rome. So, you know, um, but it, so it's it's set there, and so I had to have a car drive me out, and they dropped me off, and there's just a sign that says Antica Via Roma, Ooh. and I was like, all right, all right, but I did not know where this restaurant was. You couldn't see. It was just a, it was just a gate and oh. a road into the woods, <laughs> and I was like, I got to do what the Romans do. Yeah. I guess this is how they do things, right? Yeah. And I'd called him and just said, hey, like, I'm coming over. Like, do I need to make reservations? I'll be there at 7. And no, 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 no. And I couldn't understand him. Mm -hmm. um, 
<clears throat> and so I just went and I started, I just walked back into the woods. Oh. There's no light, but there's like little, little like stone places to sit. Okay. Uh, and I was like, okay. And then I, like, I see this house. And so I go up and the door's open and I'm like, hello, hello. No one was there. So I just continued, kept continuing on down <laughs> to the next house. And I, hello, hello. And then finally said, someone ran around and said, oh, you must have been the one that called. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I was. And he's like, mm, come in. It was seven o'clock. That's a good dinner time. He said, apologies, apologies. Dinner doesn't usually get served until 10. Yeah. It, and I'm like, 10 o'clock, I'm going to be asleep by then. He's like, come in, come in, come in. Mm -hmm. You're American, understand. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, okay. You get, guy okay. gets me. <laughs> and so he sets me down mm -hmm. and he's like, what do you want? And I was like, I mean, this is all in Italian. Mm. I, I can understand a little. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's like, this is a recipe from a cookbook from 2000 years ago. This is what you're going to have. And I was like, okay. And then he just started bringing out like carbonara. And then he brought out cheese that they had just made. And then he Ooh. brought all this. It was a spread. Nice. But it was the weirdest place ever. Because I was sitting in this <laughs> whole, like it, it was a house. But oh. then there's like, there was a bunch of tables. And it was really fancy inside. But I was the only, only one, one there. there. <laughs> it was very scary, very freaky. Uh, but uh, as I started eating, like I didn't get done eating until like 9.15, 9.30. Oh, wow. And people did start, start finally to... filtering in. But it was very odd that I w had to walk like 200 meters back into the woods. Wow. Uh, but hey, that's hey. how the Romans do it. Yeah. I don't know where that story came from because what I really wanted to ask you <laughs> was, okay, you had a great date at Olive Garden. Yep. What's the worst date you've ever been on? Hmm. Worst. That one's tough to pick from. There's a couple. There's two I can think of. Um, one... They're like, yeah, let's go for a date tonight. And I was like, okay. Um, they're like, yeah, uh, will you come pick me up at this address? And I was like, they asked you to come pick them up. I, warning signs should have been there. But I was like, yeah, okay. So then I text, because I'm not walking up to the door. Not about that lifestyle. So I just texted, I'm here. A couple minutes go by. There's a whole bunch <laughs> of guys that just keep leaving this house. And I'm like, all right, well, at least I'm going to pack up and go. I've been here five minutes. That's kind of, I think that's... A reasonable I amount. I mean, that's in college. If your teacher wasn't there in five minutes, you yeah. just left, right? Exactly. But I waited till like seven minutes and didn't realize I was picking them up from a party. <laughs> and You're picking the guy you're going on a date with up at a party. Okay. Yep. And then, obviously, parties, you do what you do. A little bit of drinks. Uh, then he's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. So did the classic bowling, whatever, did bowling. And then after he's like, well, do you want to go for drinks? I'm Ten like, pin or five pin? Uh, what are the big balls? That's 10 pin. 10 pin. Yeah, we did 10 pin. Most people in the States don't know that there's a five pin bowling oh. in Canada and it's like a, li it's like literally like a baseball and mm -hmm. you roll that down. Yeah. And I'm damn good at it. So Ugh, I'm not, I'm the worst at bowling. <clears throat> I hate when you can't get bumpers. 10 pin bowling. I'm horrible. Oh, five yeah. pin bowling. I'm actually pretty good. Oh, you so. know, your way around the little balls. Uh, yeah. Little balls. I'm good. I mean, oh. that's, hey, that's my hey. lot in life. Whatever. Hey, gotta be good at something. Yep. Um, yeah. So then. I guess it was more just the start that was awful because he was drunk the whole time. And I was like, this is great. So, so he's drunk, you're sober, yeah. and you're just enjoying that company. Yeah. So that was the one. The other one, um, living in Australia, money finances were a little tight. So I was like, huh. you know, I was hungry, wanted a nice meal. The noodles weren't really cutting it. So... Just did the old Tinder swipe and... Oh, you used the mm -hmm. Tinder for a meal. I did. That yeah. kind of girl, are you? It was one time. Are you sure? <laughs> like, you uh, you kind of seem like you're the type that probably did that multiple times. G girls got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, girls complain like they have it all bad, but then they use, they use Tinder. I, I mean, I was never on the Tinder train mm -hmm. because I was married when Tinder came out, but I was on, like, the MySpace... Um, Whenever you had your, like, you could search people and see when they were online and you'd shoot them a message mm. and you'd just you'd shoot your shot. And sometimes it worked, sometimes yeah. it didn't. Uh, but Tinder seems like it made everything a little more accessible and uh, definitely allowed you to eat in Australia, it sounds yeah. like. So it was just, you know, tried to make conversation, tried to chat, uh, really was not going anywhere. And I was like, hey, maybe I'll call you again. And then just went home, never. What'd you eat? 
Went to an Olive Garden. <laughs> no, it's an Italian place though. It's a pasta. Mm. Substance, you know, it keeps you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, hey, one time, like before Tinder, I was used for like a meal. Like I remember, um, I had a roommate in college. Like we were teammates, and he was dating uh, a woman, which he's now married to, and okay. has kids. And uh, they actually introduced me to my first wife. But before they introduced me to my first wife, they they hooked me up with some of their friends, mm-hmm. and we went to this restaurant in Ardmore, Oklahoma, called Two Frogs Grill. Oh, it's a fancy little joint. Nice. It, in Ardmore, there was like Two Frogs. El Chico's and Boudreaux's Mexican oh, restaurant. It's okay. a little, little town. Um, but took, t- took this girl out. Uh, it was, it was a double date, mm. double date, maybe probably a double date. I can't remember. But anyway, um, I remember we watched a walk to remember. Oh yeah. That was, that was the first date movie. Yikes. Um, but we went to, to this dinner restaurant, right. And it was cool ambiance. There was like this, uh, jazz, little black jazz, Ooh. uh, pianist, and he didn't really know the words to any songs. Uh, but the one song I remember was Pretty Woman. Oh, and the okay. only words he knew were Pretty Woman. <laughs> <laughs> pretty Woman. Pretty hey, at Woman. At least you know something. <laughs> pretty, not red, not black, not yellow, not white, but Pretty Woman. And he just, I mean, he tickled the ivories and oh. just went off on that all night. Uh, that was the, probably the highlight of the night, okay, really. Yeah. But she uh, she ordered the most expensive thing on the Ugh, menu. One like, of those. Very, like, I mean, listen, I'm in college didn't really have a job. Mm-hmm. And so for someone to order a $40 steak in 2002 was Jeez. something. Yeah. And then when she only ate like four bites and was like, this isn't that great. I'm not taking it to go. And oh, I'm like, that's devastating. I am. I'm taking it to go. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then we went and watched a walk to remember. Mm. Um, I tried to kiss her on the cheek and she's like, no, thanks. And I was uh, like, all right, well, I'm out of here. Yikes. That was probably well, the worst one. But Tan, like uh, yeah. my current wife, before our first date, I mean, we had a Whatever we had, we had a group date, and then uh, our first date was actually ice skating, and Aww. the Canadian fell down more times than I did. I'd never been ice skating. I'm not uh, surprised. <laughs> but before the first date, I uh, like two days before I was playing ball, and you know I was a shortstop, a little rangy, rangy mm-hmm. shortstop. Mm-hmm. I left to right, got a quick first step, uh, really just like a Hoover on those ba- on those ground oh, balls, yeah. just sucking them up. Um, but I uh, took a bad hop Ooh. right in the eye, yikes! And so like I had to like day before or the day of I was like hey listen I like I'll understand uh if maybe you don't want to be seen with this rough and tough dude with a black eye mm. but I took a I took a ball in the face and I got a black eye and you know luckily she uh she stuck with it and uh the rest is history here I am nice married how many ever years later oh, congrats look how you've blossomed <laughs> I'm just a late bloomer yeah lucky her yeah lucky her She's now with an internationally renowned podcaster. Wow. I know. Can Bravo. You that? She really, she is punching. <laughs> <laughs> way, way above her weight class. She's punching. No right here. kidding. Man. But anyway, on to the next. Mm. So I'm sorry that you had some shitty dates. It's okay. Sorry. There's one more I just thought of. Oh, it. okay. This well, one us. is actually the worst. So it was back in the day. I was a little young. I could drive. They couldn't drive. So their parents dropped them off at the movie theater. Oh, yeah. I remember these mm. days. I mean, Kind of, I'm mean, so old now, but I I remember this. Yeah, and it's more just the movie for a first date movie. Zero Dark Thirty. Oh yeah, that's it's a, a good first date. Movie. Very intense. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a lot. So they were 15. Yeah, you were 17. Yeah, ish. Well, yeah, we'll use those numbers. <laughs> 19. Okay, gotcha. I was 25. No. <laughs> <laughs> this was last week, and we watched it at this. And then we went to the Olive Garden. <laughs> All right, on to some hockey stuff. Sounds good. Which do you want to hit first? Do you want to hit referees or do you want to hit this game? Sometimes I'd like to hit referees, so let's go. Oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. We respect we do. officiating on the Nick and Co. show. Oh. <laughs> but there are times yes. when refs deserve not to be respected as much because they do shitty things, Yep. right? I, I mean, f- for example, we had a post in the Beer League Players Association where uh, – someone was complaining about some officiating at a tournament. Mm. Um, and it wasn't like, a, oh, this ref made all the wrong calls against us. She was actually saying, these refs were coddling our female team playing against a co-ed team. Oh. So they were protecting us, um, or maybe it was they, it, they were protecting against an all-boy team. So they were coddling our team, oh. and we were offended by it. And so she posted about... Anyone else, blah, 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 blah. And 
obviously the comments in the beer league players association, it's the fucking jungle, right? Oh yeah. Shit goes down in the comments. Oh, yeah. That's just what happens. Mm -hmm. People just decide that, Hey, you know what? I'm going to act like I got a big old swinging dong or, yeah. and, and what, what's that analogy for women? Big old swinging boobs. And, <laughs> and I'm going to, yeah. And I'm going <laughs> to show it off. Oh yeah. Right. I'm going to show it off with my keyboard typing and, then a referee messaged me and said, you got to remove that right now. We don't hmm. have any room for any disrespect of officials. Hmm. And I was just like, hey, bud, I know you. I like you. I, I've never I've never had you officiate my game, but whatever. You're doing beer league, whatever. But you can't. I can't just remove it because you don't like what these people are saying about mm -hmm. officials. Yeah. And I look at it in the NHL. The coach of the Ottawa Senators just came out and just laid into NHL officiating. The best of it best in air quotes, officiating in the world. Yeah. And he gets fined $10,000. And you know what? He was right. Like what he was saying was correct. It was a lot of missed calls. And I understand the game's fast. A lot of things happen that officials might not see, but not that much. Yeah. Not that much. Mm -hmm. I don't think. And he got fined 10,000 bucks. Meanwhile, Zdeno Chara could literally hit someone <laughs> with a cross check <laughs> that would have probably ended my career <laughs> i'd still be laying on the ice and they're just like five thousand mm -hmm. right so what do you do you have any situations where maybe officials needed to be reprimanded do you think officials need to be reprimanded do they need to be held to task i they're well especially the nhl they're the best at what they do if anyone's the best at what they do they should be held accountable for it and if these people are getting fined for their transgressions that's the word i was looking for then and they get all scrutinized they're professionals in their field and they get scrutinized by everybody officials are like that the same but like if you're at your kids like hockey game and you're yelling at this 15 year old kid that's a little that's a little bush that's uh, yeah what about beer league like these guys are coming out mm -hmm. uh they're not they're not professional uh referees other than the fact that they're getting paid 45 50 bucks to be out there okay um, should they be held uh, to task for missed calls? To an extent. Like, if it's both-sided, then you can't really, I'd say. If it's say. egregious. But what about officials? That, like, we, we know that yeah. there's officials mm -hmm. that have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. And they act like you can't even say anything to them or <laughs> you're teed up. Yeah, can't even kiss, blow a kiss to someone in the penalty well, box. Well, <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> I, mean that, I, I was asking for that, yeah. right? But on the NHL officials, here's my idea. Here's mm -hmm. what I think. We should make officials available to the media after the games. Uh, yeah. They should oh, have to answer, yeah. hey, what happened here? And the official can say, hey, listen, I missed it. And that, that, that's what would happen a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. But there are times where you're just like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Like with the the Sharks uh, and the Vegas Knights in the playoffs mm -hmm. when that the guy fell and he called something and it led to, what, three or four straight goals that cost the uh, Vegas Knights uh, yeah. a shot to the next round. So that's my idea. We should take officials and make them available to the media. Do you see any negative with that? No. No? No, I think that's a great idea. I mean, these guys are getting paid pretty good money. And I'm, yeah. listen, I'm not hating on officials. I love officials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to have competitive games without officials. You know why? Because hockey players are idiots. Oh, All that's of true. 98% of us are idiots. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. I was, I was filming uh, beer league games last night where two guys ran into each other and one guy got pissed off like this guy did this on purpose. And I'm just like, <laughs> no, uh, he didn't. So if we didn't have referees, then people would just be out trying to settle their own scores. And that would not be a good thing in beer no. league hockey. Mm -mm. Now, beer league hockey, on the other hand, I, I've done something before that I'm not proud of, but I think it needed to be done. Mm. Um, a ref, I, I was in charge. Like I was in oh, charge okay. at a tournament. Yeah. And... He wasn't lining up the people in the right spot. For example, when there's a power play, it always starts in the offensive zone. That's what I told him. He wasn't doing it. So the other team mm -hmm. got a power play that I was playing. And so I'm saying, hey, like they're supposed to have the puck here, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And he said, I don't give a fuck, motherfucker. Oh. And I was like, hey, Yikes. hey, 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 hey. You can't do that. And I'm like, you can't call me a you can't call me a motherfucker. That's just not how this thing yeah. works. He ended up kicking me out of the game. And I, I got heated. All right. As you do, yeah. Uh, I kicked out of the game. I said, if I'm leaving, or you're leaving. 
And he fucking left. He left with me. <laughs> he said, "We're gonna go. Co- we're gonna go contact the guy. You know, that's my mm-hmm. contact." Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just chased him down. Uh, we had our words, but I just like you can't call people a motherfucker. Like yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you how we do things. Yeah. Right. Um, but I just, I think it's sometimes refs need to be, need to be reprimanded as well. Mm-hmm. But I also understand they're human. Yep. They make mistakes. Mm-hmm. They take a lot of shit in the NHL level, level. I don't know what kind of shit they take. Cause I'm not an yeah. NHLer, but in the beer league level, they take a lot of shit. Yeah. People always say, Oh, you got to have thick skin. I agree. That's but true. Hey, beer leaguers, do you know how much shit you give officials? Like when I'm playing, I don't really notice it. But when I'm filming and taking photos at beer league games, I'm like, holy shit, these guys are riding these guys pretty hard, right? And so like I usually tell the refs, I'm like, hey, you're doing a shitty job yeah, because no one's complaining about you over here. So let's make some calls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I just, I, I saw the thing about Ottawa and then I had this thread happen and I'm just mm-hmm. like, what, like, where do, where do referees think that, they don't have to do a good yeah. job, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just weird. What, what What's the thoughts of the people that are listening? Yeah. Right? I mean, have you ever had any ref that has just went completely off the rails? Mm. Just the guy that called me the motherfucker. Yeah. Everyone else is, I, I've, I've had pretty good experiences with refs, and I think that we do need them. Yeah. Oh, it's just definitely. like goalies. Like, we have the, the conversation about goalies all the time and paying and all that stuff. You need goalies, and goalies will say, oh, well, you need us to play. Well, you need players to play, too. Yeah. We all need each other. Yeah. So let's be Big fucking cool to each family. other. Big old happy family. Yeah. So, um, all right. Moving on to the next thing. Colorado, uh, LA Kings played a stadium series mm-hmm. outdoor game in Colorado Springs. Awesome game. Three to one game. Highly contested. Everyone was happy, it looked like. And mm-hmm. then I started seeing reports leaked out that fans were irate, pissed off, and mad. Did you see this? I did a little research. Whoa. Okay. From well, let's what talk you about sent it. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. You t- give a little background. Um. Well, what I <laughs> researched <laughs> is that, yeah, they really hyped this game up well. Everyone was excited. And just some of the planning maybe was not 100% thought through. And there's a couple, more than a couple people a who people. couldn't get into even to park before they could even get into the game until like the second period and missed a ton of the game due to poor planning. Yeah, I, I mean, the Colorado Springs, uh, I, I can't remember if it was the Air Force Academy, but Colorado Springs was in charge of, like, the parking and the mm. logistics and that kind of stuff. And there were people that were literally having to park over a mile away. Jeez. Because they were just like, fuck it, I'm not waiting in this yeah. line. They pulled up on a curb. They had to walk a mile and didn't get into, like, the end of the second intermission. Ugh. Missed all the entertainment. And so people are legit irate and mad. Yeah. And they want refunds. Mm-hmm. Would you demand a refund? yeah i'm a plan like i'm a like i'm yeah. a i'm a planner mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have let like they're like okay we we're gonna leave at three three o'clock from denver uh. to make this hour-long drive um i would i would have been way earlier for yeah. sure so uh i can see where the nhl is gonna be like well you should have just left earlier should have mm-hmm. known it was gonna be busy yeah but to make a one hour drive a four hour drive yeah. is nuts mm-hmm. i think yeah and i think something needs to be done i think if you if i think you have to, you as an organization, the NHL, a professional sports organization, or even Colorado Springs has to know that there's going to be these things and maybe put out warnings. Yeah. Maybe put out something that says, hey, listen, roads are going to be crowded. And I think they said there might have been some uh, some accidents as well. Oh, okay. I get yeah, that. People are excited. Um, hey, make sure you leave five hours early. Yeah. Right? I mean, p- I even guess. the airports are saying, hey, come stand in line three hours to... Uh, to, to make sure you don't miss your flight. Well, for me, I'm Nexus guy, so I just walk right on through. Oh, I, well, humble know. brag. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy. But it is crazy that people missed two inter- two periods in the intermission. Yeah. It's nuts. Like, I just wonder how early they left. Like, were they last minute and they're like, okay, I'm going to leave? Or did they? were they the people who maybe left an hour early and everyone just was an hour early? Yeah. I mean, I, I can remember, know. like, as a young lad going okay. to, like, the University of Oklahoma games, like, we knew that, like, I-35 from Moore to Norman was going to be backed up. Mm-hmm. Leave yourself some extra time. Yeah. Right? But, but we'd always be out there at 8 in the morning anyway, doing a little tailgating. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, eating some burgers and dogs, having my first beer when I was 14 out nice. there at the OU game, you know, not a big deal. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Did everyone leave an hour before? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, and there was a ton of people. I mean, I... What a hundred thousand people! 
that's a lot of people to go into. Some, yeah. You know. But these guys do have it. I mean, they're Air Force Academies in Colorado Springs, so you think they'd know. Like, there's college football games. I'm sure they've been crowded before. So it's it's a really weird thing. It's I, it, I'm very interested to find what happens. What happens? Mm-hmm. Do they get refunds? And how this affects stadium series events going yeah. forward? Because they yeah. just announced like Carolina is going to have one. Oh, okay. Um, and they're not a, a big hockey place, but let me tell you about a bummer of a hockey thing. They just did uh, the statistics for a hockey game yesterday that was being played at the same time as the XFL. Do you know what the XFL is? No. It's like the new off-season ho- uh, football league. Okay. Like, And it doubled up the ratings of the hockey, of oh. a St. Louis Blues game. The St. Louis XFL team's ratings were double that of a St. Louis. And this is a Stanley Cup champions. Wow. Yikes. Why don't people love hockey? I don't know. I don't get it. Me neither. I mean, football, it, it's all the same thing. Like this That's when I first discovered hockey, I was mm-hmm. like, how the hell did I not like this forever? Yeah. It's the same thing. Like, you got big dudes mm-hmm. crashing into each other at really yeah. high speeds yeah. and trying to, you know, trying to put the puck in the net, obviously, but football's trying to get the football in the end zone. It's the same thing. Hockey's mm-hmm. just faster, yeah. requires more skill. Yeah. But I also think um, for hockey, if you don't know the rules, the game moves so fast. Maybe that's what it, the game moves so fast for a lot oh, of people until you actually so you understand what's going on. Yeah. Why they're whist- why the why, are yeah, going. Why are they whistling? Like why the transition? Mm-hmm. Like it's, I mean, hockey is a game of art and beauty, oh, oh, yeah. but it is fast mm-hmm. except for when I'm playing. <laughs> um, all right. Last thing before, we, last thing before we go, um, I want to get people involved in this podcast. Mm-hmm. I want to hear other stories. Yeah. I'm hilarious. You're hilarious. Yeah. We get that. Mm hmm. But other people have stories and experiences that we do not. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe they don't have first date to Olive Garden stories. They, maybe well. they don't have going to a date with a black guy because you took a bad hop. Yeah. But they have other funny stories. Mm-hmm. And I want to hear them. I want to hear them too. So we're getting ready to call John up here. Ooh. John has a story. I put a little call out and I said, hey, anyone have any funny stories they want to share on the podcast? In the Beer League Players Association. And I have a lot of people that message me. John, John's the winner. Mm. First off, for the he's the number one person. Hopefully, we can get this going to a segment. We can get a couple stories yeah. a, a week. We can have our listeners vote on which one's the funny one, and then we can have the official funniest story of the Nick and Co show of the year. So, who knows? This is percolating in yeah, my brain. Okay, I like it. I like so, it. So uh, let's get John. Let's let's give John a call. All right. Like a real radio station now. Wow. All right, so uh, first off, introduce yourself, tell everyone where you're from, uh, tell everyone a little bit about Heroes Cup, and then hit us with your story. Uh, so, John DeBruce, I'm from the Boston area in Massachusetts. Um, Heroes Cup, it's a um, all-veteran first responder tournament uh, in Massachusetts. Um, it's got, I think, now close to like 100 teams in it. It started in 20, uh, 2017, and it's just, you know, it's a fun, awesome event for, you know, military, police, firefighters, EMTs to, to go play some hockey, have a good time, beat each other up, drink afterwards, and, you know, and do our thing. What, what team do you play on? Uh, I play for uh, a few teams, but every team I play for is to benefit the Escape of the 22. Right. Um, yeah, that's, the group, it, that's yeah, the group that yeah. I love, right? And, uh, and what, what's Escape for the 22? Uh, so we play to uh, raise awareness for, for veteran suicide. Um, you know, we, we use hockey as a catalyst for that, uh, but at, at our core, we're a veteran suicide prevention organization. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to raise, raise awareness, raise money, you know, help families out, help soldiers out, um, veterans come back into that team environment, you know, get them in the locker room, beat each other up a little bit, and you know, get that brotherhood back. Yeah, for sure. And I'll just expand a little bit more. Uh, the 22, Escape for the 22, and the reason the 22 is out there is because uh, statistics show that every day 22 veterans take their life. And so uh, this organization is really, uh, really rad, mainly because of the people and, and the same way with the Beer League Players Association. But I've met these guys on a couple occasions. I've done some events with them. I was played in Heroes Cup a couple years ago. Uh, Bobby, the guy that runs it, is great. But, I mean, really what they're using is, is they're using hockey and sport as a way to, you know, just educate veterans, give them an outlet, uh, let them know that, you know, 
Uh, there are people there are people that that love them and want them to get the help that they need and and they're using hockey uh, to get to help them get that help and so it's a great uh, it's a great organization and Heroes Cup I played in it I played way too many games while I was there I didn't win a one uh, because we played in the lowest division and our first game was against the Boston Fire Department they just beat the hell out of us and I knew right then that there's probably not a bad hockey player in in boston that that uh plays and oh, so there's plenty of bad ones trust me <laughs> they just don't show up at those events <laughs> <laughs> oh no where are they you didn't see us that's all oh gotcha uh but anyway all right so uh great organization guys go check out skate for the 22 uh the guy run it bobby he likes to think that he's an eagle glove man and he can match my eagle glove collection and it'll never happen bobby uh but i'll let you can continue to think you, uh that you can try uh, but John, I'd like to see a side by side of that, actually. Well, I have 85, and he has like 20, so I don't want to make him cry. I mean, it's quality of a quantity, right? Mm, yeah, he, I mean, you got a point, but I mean, I I think mine are pretty quality. I mean, they're pretty primo. I've been spending the last nine years collecting them. <laughs> All right, that's, you know? I got I got to defend El Presidente. I, I, I know you, you gotta you defend your Presidente, but you know the BLPA commish over here, he's got a pretty good collection. But uh, all right, John, <laughs> hit us uh, hit us with the story here. All right, so uh, let me set the stage a little bit. So it's first Heroes Cup event 2017, and Friday night the the big opening event is Demas Casino Night. Um. So, you know, they gave each player a set of chips. You know, Jack Fire was out there handing out free shots. Um, I think that kind of is enough said about that. Um, so I had this girl that I was kind of had my eye on who was volunteering at the uh, at the tournament, and she just wound up to be the one giving up the chips. So this might be the smoothest line I've ever given a girl which i don't know if it's good or not you guys can be the judge of that we'll let brooklyn judge she's uh, right here that's what we brought her in for it's her specialty <laughs> all right so be easy on me then all right so she was hooking my buddy up with chips and i was next to him i told her that if she gave him extra chips i'd give her my number and she paused for a second which made me a little nervous um but she wound up giving him the chips mm -hmm. which is good for me so i gave him my number um it worked out then so what do you think? Was that all right? Yeah, that was. You got the results you were looking for, so I'd say ultimately that was a pretty uh, good one. All right, yeah, shot the shot and it worked out. So. Shoot, hey, shoot or shoot, bud. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that was when I was, you know, semi coherent at, at that night. <laughs> um, so Jack Fire started kicking in a little bit, and at the end of the night, everyone's kind of dying down, and that's when they had the auction. Uh, first auction I've ever been a part of. Um, turns out I'm not too good at them, really. <laughs> um, they had some pretty awesome items up for grabs. You know, they had some gear signed by Hockey Legends. They had trips, um, events, you, you name it, they had it. Uh, I don't know why I waited for this item to come up to, to start bidding, but they brought out the signed John Mayer guitar. And I, I looked at it, I was like, well, this is it. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this is the item that I'm gonna so you that's know, the item. I, I, to. I mean, I've seen items there, and there's that. I mean, they have like Bobby Orr autograph photos. They've got <laughs> yeah. hockey jerseys, and you're like, yeah, you know, yeah. The John Mayer, your body's a wonderland. I need that Dude, guitar. John Mayer hasn't been relevant since like 2001. I don't know why <laughs> I was thinking this is the one I was gonna hang my hat on. Yeah, well, booze is a but, true serum, so it sounds like you're his biggest uh, fan. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I can. I can belt those in John Mayer if I, if I got a couple in me. <laughs> okay. All right, so I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know if I was trying to impress this girl that I just gave my number to, which I, I guess I really didn't have to anymore because you know, I already gave her my number. Um, but the bid is starting out at like 100 bucks or whatever. Um, so someone put up a bid, uh, and I was like, you know what? It's charity. I'm going to at least raise the price that way you know, more money goes back to the Heroes Cup and we can have better events throughout and, the year or whatever. And if it makes me look um, good to this uh, this lady, you know, that's another bonus. Exactly. You know, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so I bid 150 Another guy bids $200. Uh, you know, I bid 250 Another guy bids 300 It keeps going up. And at this point, you know, 
it's not for charity anymore for me. It's kind of getting personal. <laughs> so you're in a bid uh, war with with one other guy over a John Mayer guitar. It started, it started about a handful of guys, and then after about 300 bucks, it was just me and another guy. <laughs> um, and I, I was like, you know what? There's nobody going home with this guitar except for me. <laughs> um, so I put up a $400 bid, got out bid again. Um, it keeps going back and forth, and it's fifty dollars each way, and then, and then we start going down to twenty five. I think we're kind of reality setting in for us. I got to spend a lot of money on a John Mayer guitar here. Um, so he goes five seventy five. I was like, you know what, six hundred bucks, and you just you, nothing. You the crowd it. is silent. <laughs> you slammed it right on it. You pulled it. You pulled him out. You said, here's six hundred bucks. I'm, My big old exactly. balls just I, a swinging. I, I, what do you got? I threw 600 bills on the table, going once, going twice, uh, sold to me, <laughs> the idiot who spent 600 bucks on a John May signed guitar. <laughs> um, and they give me the guitar. I Venmo them the 600 bucks. And as soon as I Venmo them the money, just I immediately sober up. Reality hits me, and I was like, what am I going to do with a John May signed guitar? <laughs> I'm not going to bring it home i'm not gonna hang it on my wall it's gonna you know it's gonna sit in the closet or whatever so bobby Carlton, who we spoke about earlier is standing right beside me probably appalled at what he just witnessed um i look at him and i just like hey man you can take this for the foundation and raffle it off at a different event i have no idea what to do with this thing and we took it and i think it sat in his garage for over a year before we actually raffled it off and maybe broke even hey hey breaking even hey breaking even for charity is good but i have a couple questions mm-hmm. yeah go ahead was the girl impressed i i don't know uh we want to you know get a little hot and heavy that night so like maybe oh, okay i don't know if it was a john may guitar that that did it though okay um did you see her after the initial hot and heavy action after the guitar yeah, we actually I moved on a bit for like uh, a few months. Oh, after that. oh. okay. Other because my next yeah. question was, what if this other guy was bidding you up because he was also trying to impress this girl? Mm-hmm. And maybe the idea is that she was a plant. Bobby is uh, Bobby's a genius, all right. So maybe uh, Bobby planted this pretty lady here to get people to drive up these auctions. Yeah, I never actually thought of that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think he'd, he'd try to do that to someone in the foundation, but uh, now that you say it, it sounds like something that he would Exactly. And, up. hey, not, he wasn't doing it to someone at the foundation. He was doing it for the foundation. And that's true. And I just happened to be the guy who took the bait. You just happened to be the, the patsy. But, hey, you, you got to date this uh, fine young lady uh, mm-hmm. for uh, a couple months. Um, yep. You, you now have the pride of knowing that you won – that guitar I won I did but it cost you 600 bucks so I mean that's an expensive uh, that's an expensive pickup line but hey if it works it, it works it is it, it worked we had to go to Taco Bell for a few months after that just to kind of even out the finances but hey hey you know what is. in the end you're a winner you won the girl <laughs> you won the guitar hey, at least one thing, so. exactly so all right, Johnny. Hey, great story. Brooklyn, do you have any questions about the story? No, I think that last little wrap-up covered all my questions I had. Do you think, Brooklyn, mm-hmm. if 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 John was pursuing you, okay, would that first initial pickup line work? Probably, yeah. Okay. Smooth. How impressed would you be that <laughs> this, this guy that, j- that you just gave your number to uh, would now be like, oh, wow, he just spent 600 bucks on a John Mayer guitar? Well, I like winners, so John sounds like a winner. John, so. <laughs> John sounds like a winner. <laughs> so, all right, John. Hey, thanks for the story about it. Thanks for the uh, BLPA support. And uh, hopefully, uh, if I don't see it at one of our other events, definitely the Boston, either the, the draft experience or the team tournament we're hosting up there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, buddy. We'll chat soon. Thank you. All right. All right take bye. care. All right, John. John killing it, shooting his shot. And it worked. And it worked. But here's here's one thing that I forgot to ask him, and I should have asked him. Um, 
maybe he's not a sales guy. Mm. I don't know. Once you make the sale, mm -hmm. you stop sailing. Yeah. Or selling. You can, if you oversell, you turn them off. And that exactly. might have been why this relationship only lasted a couple months. Yeah. I don't know. Because he got the win. But mm -hmm. then he's like, oh, I'm still going to impress her with this $600 John Mayer guitar. Which is pretty impressive. What? The only John Mayer song I know is Your Body is a Wonderland. I feel like any. There's another one. Didn't he date about Taylor Swift? Yeah. Isn't there a song about him that she wrote? Is it Shake It Off? <laughs> I uh, think it's Blank Space. She has a long list of ex-lovers. Mm. Maybe. But well, she talks about those uh, in Shake It Off. Right. And I know this because my kid has dance parties to shake it off every day. You know, you've seen him. I, yeah, he, yeah. He's a dancer. He's a dancer machine. He is, he is gifted. Um, so that's a great story, John. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, that's all we got for today. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty decent flow. We're working on it. We're going to get a third person in soon. Oh, yeah. Right. We got some. Gabby left us. Yep. Hater. Now, I don't hate her. She's a hater. Yeah. For leaving us. Mm -hmm. But we still love her. We still, we still do. We still love her. All right. That's it. Hey, be good or be good at it.